Hello, my name is Dave, and we're going to learn about dynamic arrays. And dynamic arrays are one way of implementing a list structure efficiently, where a list is an abstract data type that I'm going to assume you're familiar with. It represents a sequence of elements. The elements are stored in some order. Um, we're allowed to have duplicate values. And the traditional operations we might want to perform on a list are asking that list for its size, uh, adding an element to the list, to the end of the list usually. Um, uh, let's see, getting an element. Getting an element. In fact, maybe we'll put that first since it's going to be simpler to implement it. Get an element from at a particular index, from the middle of the list, int index. And then with some fancier things, maybe we want to add an element at a particular index in the middle of the list. We'll look at how that's done. And remove an element from the middle of the list. And maybe when we remove it, we'd like to know what element we removed, so we'll return that. So that should be a good set of methods to work with. So how do we implement a dynamic array? Um, and remember, dynamic arrays are just one way of making this set of methods work. Um, how do we write a dynamic array? You may, have, you may not have encountered the word dynamic array, by the way, in your course. If you're taking a Java course, you've probably seen it as being an array list. So an example of a dynamic array a dynamic array implementation is the array list class that comes built into Java. Um, but a generic term for this idea is dynamic array. So how does that work? Well, inside an array list, or any dynamic array, the one that I'm making now, I'm going to have an array. So let's draw a picture of that. Here's my dynamic array class. Here's an instance of the dynamic array class. It looks like this inside of dynamic array it's got some data data so that's one of that's a field inside of my class and that field is going to be associated with an array uh, let's say that large so here's my array and apparently has four elements let's make a note it has element at position 0 1 2 and 3 four elements and those elements are somehow stored inside of that array as, let's say, little blobs here. So these are these represent the elements of my array. These are references to those elements that are stored in the array itself. And that's the plan. So now we're going to implement this, this uh, dynamic array class to have this array inside it. And the first thing we're going to worry about is how on earth, I mean, we can kind of imagine how size and get would work, but we're very confused about how do you add elements to this thing? How do you remove elements to the, from this thing? I mean, you have four elements in this, how do you add a fifth element? Because one thing we know about arrays is you cannot change the size of an array. Once you've created it, it is that size forever. So how do we make a larger array? Well, or we, uh, we can't actually enlarge the original array, but we can do the next thing, we can make a new array. So let's take a look at the uh, what that would look like. We would make a new array. So suppose we want to add a fifth element. Suppose this is that fifth element we would like to add to the end of the dynamic array. We'll make a new array, and that new array will be one position larger. And in a moment, uh, probably in the next video, we'll see why this is not an efficient way of solving the problem, but it is an excellent way to understand how this works at first. So we make a new array. We copy all of these references into the new larger array, including this new last element. If that is all we do, we actually will not have accomplished anything, because according to this dynamic array class, the data field still refers to this original smaller array. So the most important thing, the thing that's so easy to forget, but it's very, very, very important, is that we need to make sure that we change this reference to refer to the new larger array. Now when I do that, you're going to wonder what happens to the old array. Well, the old array gets garbage collected, so it gets, uh, let's see, it goes away in a cloud of smoke or something. Here's it getting garbage collected. Poof! It's gone. It gets garbage collected. So we're not going to worry about that. So let's take a look at how to actually write this code now. Alright, so we said we call this class dynamic array. Though we certainly could call it array list if we wanted to be true to the Java naming convention and consistent with the built-in class array list. Um, 
and dynamic array is going to have some data and I'm going to make my data of type object or in other words it's going to be an array of objects if we wanted to do this the generic way we'd make a dynamic array of E and this would be an array of E but that's going to in introduce complications that I think are are going to get in the way of us understanding the core concept of dynamic dynamic arrays right now uh, and you know we're going to have lots of methods here but the main method and I want to focus on the the core tricky method here and that's how do you add an element to the end of the array. If we could do that, we'd be in good shape. So add an element, an object, to the end of my array. How am I going to do that? Well, what did I do? I, I realized right away I needed a larger array. So the first thing we'll do is we'll make a bigger array. A bigger array, uh, which I guess we'll initialize to be a new bigger array. And how big? Well, it should be the size of the old array, that's data.length, plus one more position for the new value at the end. The next thing that we did when we drew the bigger array is we copied all of those references into the bigger array. And unfortunately, that's going to require a for loop. No shortcuts here. We're going to have to copy one element at a time. Actually, there is a, there is a built-in method that will do this for you in Java, but uh, it doesn't change the fact that it's still copying one element at a time, it may just be slightly more efficient behind the scenes. So, for each position in the smaller array, because I, right, I, I only made four copies, these four pink objects moved into the larger array, four copies, so for each position in the, uh oh, where'd my cursor go? For each position in the smaller array, get the value that's at that position of the smaller array, and copy it into the same position in the bigger array. And when I've done that, I now have all of these elements in my bigger array. But remember, there are two more things I need to do. One is, I need to actually add this element to the end of the array. Uh, add that element to the end of the array. So, uh, and actually, I'm going to make a note. Add to end. I don't want to forget that. Uh, but I want to deal with the other thing first. And that is, I need to make sure that I change this pointer, this reference, this field, so that instead of referring to the old small array, it's referring to the new bigger array. So refer to the new bigger array. That means data gets the value of bigger. Okay, this is kind of a scary line of code, perhaps, or a deceptively not scary line of code. What it says is look up the value of bigger. The value of bigger is this bigger array here. Maybe we should have drawn bigger itself in the picture. So here's bigger pointing to that same array. And at that point, data was referring to the smaller array. When I say data equals bigger, I'm saying data gets the value of bigger. The value of bigger is the memory location of this bigger array. Therefore, data gets that memory location. Data refers to the new bigger array. And at that point, the smaller array will eventually be garbage collected. It is forgotten to us. We can't access it anymore. OK, now I need to remember to add my element to the end. So that would be, now I can add to the end of either, because I have two names for the same larger array at this point. Uh, the last index is the number of elements, minus 1, and in that position, store obj, and I've added this value to the end of my array, and lo and behold, from the outside, I've maintained the illusion that this really is a dynamic array, that it is getting larger as I add elements. On the inside, I did a lot of work, um, like a, maybe like a swan, it looks graceful, from above the water, but it's frantically paddling below the surface trying to move all these elements from one array to the other. The next question is going to be, is this really a good idea? I mean, we're copying all the elements every time. If we have 100 elements, we will copy 100 elements into a 101 element array. Then when we have 101 elements, we'll copy 101 elements into a 102 element array. And we're starting to worry that this might not be an effective way of uh, adding an element to the end of a dynamic array. Um, and it isn't. There is a much more efficient solution. Um, that's what we'll explore in the next video. I will see you there.